Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Good evening, everyone. It is 6.34. I'm calling the regular council meeting to order for Tuesday, August 6, 2024. Ms. Monroe, if you'd like to call the roll. Mayor Don Barnard. Here. Tiffany Hollis. Yes. Ryan Green. Here. Dave Seeland. Here. Jeff Barr. Present. Wes Coble. Bob Orsini. Here. Okay. If we could please stand for the invocation provided by Pastor Nick Shaner from the Johnstown Shepherd Church. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day that you've given us, and we're grateful that your word tells us and promises us that in the name of Jesus, we can come to you with boldness and confidence, and we do that here tonight. God, it's a busy time for uh, many in our community for with uh, the fair taking place and school starting up soon, and it's just a lot of busyness going on, and we're just asking that you would be very real and very present with all the the busyness that's taking place and God here tonight with this meeting that's gathered and the things that will be discussed we also ask your blessing and your guidance and wisdom to people to be upon each person that is discussing and sharing and the the plans that are made and God I pray a special blessing upon each uh, council member and committee uh, that is represented and God we're just grateful that you are, are good all the time and we just ask that you to be with us tonight and bless this time and we thank you for everything in Jesus' name we pray Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Nick, you guys have done a wonderful job on your church. The outside is looking amazing. Yeah. Can't imagine how hard it was to take the stone out for the steps. It was hard. Yeah. Um, so first item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. We're going to um, remove item 16, the executive session to consider confidential business. So that is the one change to the agenda. Uh, do we have a motion? A motion to uh, approve the agenda as written with the exception with the omission of point 16. A second. Aye. 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 Action on minutes. We received the July 15th, 2024 minutes. Does anyone have any changes or anything they'd like to add to those minutes? Hearing none, what is the will of counsel for the July 15th, 2024 minutes? Motion to approve is written. Second. Are all in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, item number seven, Ms. Monroe, do we have anybody who wants to speak tonight? No speaker slips. Does anybody here like to speak on anything that's not on the agenda tonight? Okay, hearing none, we're moving forward. Uh, item eight, planning and zoning had their uh, their 723 meeting was canceled. Their next one is 813 at 630 in the council chambers. Design and review board, they met on July 23rd. Their next meeting is August 13th at 5 p.m. in the council chambers. Uh, was there anything to report from that meeting? I'll defer to Teresa. I was not in attendance for that. Sorry. Uh, they had four applications for various items, and they tabled all four for different reasons. Okay. They'll all four be back on Tuesdays. Okay. Uh, finance met tonight. Our next meeting is August 20th at 4.30 at the Council Chambers. Um, we have one item that we'd like to present to Council. Um, you guys okay doing it here, or you guys want to wait till the end? Okay. I'll leave it to Ms. Hollis to go over the item. So we discussed um, a few times in finance committee about an economic assistance credit in conjunction with the proposed income tax reform. Um, basically, it will be a credit. Would you call it a refund? Or a, a, credit? A, a refund rebate. Rebate. Um, for individuals that make $20,000 to $75,000 that live and work in the city of Johnstown. And it would be a $250 credit or rebate <laughs> for, um, for those individuals. The application process, um, how do we discuss the? We, the, the application, we'll have an application that you have to fill out for. Yeah. It'll be very simple. Um, you have to include your RITA tax return, um, and that's basically it. Uh, and you have to qualify within the, the certain parameters of making so much 
and living in Johnstown at, at, at that point at the end of the year. And the thought process behind this is to, um, for residents that an increase in income tax would be detrimental to their household. Um, we're hoping to offset that and still be able to collect the tax from the, the larger companies that are coming in. That's our, our thought process behind this and um, to ease the burden on the residents as much as possible. So there'll be a few more um, items that'll come out about this, like the app. This will start for the year 2025, so you'll be able to apply in 2026 if the tax passes. Um, and the application, of, we're working on the dates of the application, but it'll be like after April 15th through say July 31st, you can apply for this uh, refund rebate on, uh, on this economic assistance program. So uh, Ms. Hollis thought of this at the beginning of this year, and I, I thought it was a wonderful idea. We just had to try to figure out how to make it work to to help those in our town that this tax is unfairly hitting the hardest uh, and to kind of make it a tiered tiered system for them so that it's not a full 2.25% increase, but uh, a little bit lower, so. Um. So if council decides to, to move forward with this, we will get literature out to explain exactly how it's gonna work and who, um, who could benefit from this process, so. So tonight, we're, I'm just asking, um, I'm going to make a motion that we move forward with this plan. Um, we will have our legal team work on the actual uh, details of it and get that in the actual resolution. But I wanted to get a vote from council to move forward with that. So this is a, a economic assistance program to help those in our town that are getting the full brunt of the, the tax um, increase. So it will have a five-year sunset period. We did that so that the new council in five years can decide if they want to continue this program or not continue this program. We don't want to have it two years and people think it's just two years gone. So we want to give the next council the chance to, to move forward with this or get rid of it, depending on how it's working. Um, you have to be at least 18 years old, um, make between 20,000 and 75,000, and be a resident at, at December 31st of that year um, that you're applying for. So um, I'd like to make a motion that we that council approves moving forward with the resolution for this economic assistance program as stated by Ms. Hollis. I'd like to add one more thing is that some of the rules for lack of better words are also to make it as minimal impact on staff as possible to administer the program because in the end they're the ones that are going to have to be taking applications, verifying information, etc. So trying to be full-time resident nine months out of the year or six or anything else. It was just the intent of on this date, you are or are not, you're eligible. Uh, because if a, a few slip through the crack, there's probably a, a few that are gonna not claim it either. But all those particulars of rules will be coming out. As soon uh, as we get them written. As soon as they get written. Yep. But th this is the basic framework for yep. it. Um, it's, it's just, dotting the I's and crossing the T's for the final part for the resolution, so. When do you anticipate this resolution to be ready for a vote? Given the circumstances with our attorney right now, um, with the death in her family, um, it will probably be within the next month. I was hoping two weeks, but it'll probably be a month. Can I second? Yes. You made the motion, correct? Yep. Yeah, I'll second. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, this is contingent on the passage of the... Yes, it is contingent yeah. on the passage of the, the tax reform. Mayor Barnard. Yes. Jeff Parr. Affirm. Bob Orsini. Yes. Dave Seelin. Yes. Brian Green. Yes. Tiffany Hollis. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so that was our finance committee meeting tonight. Uh, <coughs> it went well. Um, one quick question, Teresa. On the, the meeting on the 20th, is there a safety and service after that meeting? No. Can we move that one to our normal 5 o'clock instead of 4.30? Yes. Okay. Are you guys good with that? Okay. Uh, safety and service, they met tonight. Their next meeting is September 3rd at 5.30 in the council chambers. Uh, Mr. Green? Good meeting tonight. Uh, we talked about a few things here. City road grading, mapping progress. So we're going to have an accurate presentation of the status of our roads and their priority level. Um, to get repairs on those. We'll have more information coming. Uh, we discussed the truck traffic on Jersey and Saratoga and our no through truck signage that'll be coming up. 
Um, we'll have ongoing uh, discussion on those. The signs, the signs are up, correct? Okay. So they are officially up, um, and we'll be taking a look at those and monitoring appropriately. Uh, utility map discussion, um, accurately mapping our utilities. We also discussed that um, in, in other public presentation. And that was it. Oh, we also talked about um, we also talked about the sidewalks in the Leafy Dell apartment area. We have school coming up soon. Um, there are some repairs that are happening in that area, so we want to make sure that those are fixed um, and ready to go as everybody's kids are walking through that area to school. So that was it. At direct reports, we received the water and sewer department. Does anyone have any <laughs> questions on the water and sewer department reports tonight? Okay. Mr. Liggett, if you'd like to give your service director report. Yes, I will. I'm just going to get a few highlights here. Item number two, wastewater plan update, just letting you know that meetings on the equipment and layout of the new facility are still being worked on. Again, we had meetings on July 9th and then July 30th. We also have scheduled borings uh, for the earth where new buildings may be sitting down the sewer plant to make sure that the earth can support it or what type of foundation we have to put under. I'm going to jump through now to item number five at this point, uh, just making you aware of the water plant. <clears throat> department has received a grant for $15,000. This grant is to help us get our asset management plan in place. $15,000 is not nearly enough to put together a full loan plan, but it could help us purchase the software to put together that asset management plan. Uh, we're going to be reviewing different types of software to see where and what will work the best for the city and putting this together. Why is the asset management plan important? Uh, whenever you apply for any loan or grant from the EPA, they are now requiring this asset management be in place. We do have one, but it's all written and it's down in 14 volumes of books. So when the EPA wants to review them, they have quite a time. <laughs> with that package. So we're going to try to get this whole thing uh, set on a computer so we can send it out so they can review it. Um, big project was taken care of on July 22nd. Uh, we repaired two 8-inch mainline valves in the Leafy Dale development. And so they're up and working and things went smoothly. Boiler was lifted the same day as the repairs were done. And uh, item eight, just to keep you aware, the high service pump that pumps water from the plant to the towers is scheduled to be back sometime in the end of August, and we are still estimating that cost will be under $34,000 for that repair. Do you have any questions on any of the items? I'm assuming the service director report put in the packet that's dated 5 2 is incorrect because. Where at? The one we got in the packet's a different one than you gave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just, I, I thought I'd misheard Jack with numbers. I went to eight. I went to eight. I was like, huh? I thought I attached the one from his email. Eight two. <laughs> eight two. So you're behind the eight ball too. Today's <laughs> eight six. I don't know. I thought I grabbed the one from your. So the one you have before you is obviously nothing like the one I gave to you. I'll send you the current one. Thank you. Since that was from May. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Liggett. Um, the medical loan closet today is having some water issues. They, they'd been told it was something with the city. Jack had his guys out there right away today to take a look at it um, to get that problem resolved. Um, it's not a city issue, but at least we were able to go out there and help them determine. We supported them yeah. finding the problem, and so now they can do that fixing it. Yep. So thank you. It, it helps a, a nonprofit here in the city that um, helps our citizens a lot. Um, Anyone else have questions for Mr. Liggett? Okay, hearing none. Well, I okay. have a question. All our um, crossing flash and beakings with school coming up, as far as we know, they're operating properly, both sides, et cetera. The answer to that is, well, as far as the lights flashing and everything, yes, the setting of the timer is not yet. I have to get with Dave Janet from the school to get the school scheduled. Okay. The lights should be on, should be off, and any vacation time. So. I've got to get that back from Dave. As far as the actual bulbs in operation, all are working at this time. Thank you, sir. Uh, to fill all of council in, last year um, when uh, 
before this new council convened, there was issues with crossings, um, and we met with the PTO at the school, um, and they would like to start a school crosswalk program. Um, we're looking at trying to get organizations that have members that would be able to help man this school crossing. Um, one of the areas is on Jersey Street. There's a lot of kids who cross Jersey, um, and to try to make this a little bit safer, uh, just some different areas. So. I put something out on Facebook looking for volunteers and also asking organizations if they have anybody. So if, if your organizations, anybody you're partnered with are interested, please get with me. Um, Chief Smart and I talked about doing some training with these individuals so that everybody knows what they're doing if we can get this off the ground, so. Um, moving to council decision on zoning map amendment, which was tabled on June 18th. There's been nothing from the applicant, so that will remain tabled. Um, we have two items that were tabled legislation, ordinance 17 2024 an ordinance to prohibit cannabis dispensaries and declare an emergency. Um, we decided to uh, keep that on the table or put a moratorium on it until December 31st. That's coming up in other legislation. And then resolution 2024-28, a resolution imposing a 12-month moratorium on the commercial cultivation and processing of adult use cannabis in the city of Johnstown. Um, so we have one piece of legislation of that that's in our legislation tonight we're going to talk about, but these two items are also going to zoning for zoning to take a look at, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to remove these from the table? Okay. Um, also, thank you to Mr. Seelan, who's been doing a lot of research on cannabis, more than I think any of us imagined there was out there. So he's getting us some good information. So thank you. I'll have some coming as well. Okay. Uh, public hearings of legislation, ordinance 18 2024, an ordinance to amend the Johnstown Gateway PD district map by adding two parcels totaling nine acres to sub area one of the PD district. This is the second reading of this uh, ordinance. Um, would the applicant like to come and speak about this tonight? Having me. I'm Jamie McNally with the applicant, the Johnstown Land Company. Uh, as we reviewed at the last council meeting, the concept is to add um, nine acres to the existing sub area one of the plan development. It would be a it would be the same owner and the same use as sub area one. And the goal is, from a planning perspective, to round out kind of the edges. We often use the term the missing teeth. Um, and I brought maps for ref reference, too. Awesome. Are these the same maps as last time? They're in the packet. They're, okay. They're the same, but yeah. Okay, we got it. Thank you. Can I have one, please, Jim? Oh, yeah, of course. If you have it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Mr. McNally? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Jim. Um, do we have any citizens with a comment on this item? Okay, hearing none there. Uh, does council have any questions? Okay, what is the will of council for, or for ordinance 18-2024, the, the Mend the Johnstown Gateway PD district map? Make a motion to approve as written. I'll second. Dave Seelan? Yes. Ryan Green? Yes. Tiffany Hollis? Yes. Mayor Barnard. Yes. Jeff Barr. Yes. Alborcini. Yes. Okay, moving forward to ordinance 19 2024, an ordinance to amend the Johnstown Gateway tax increment financing area to add approximately nine acres to that area and declaring an emergency. This is the same land, correct, Jamie? It is correct, yes. So all we're doing is adding this to the, um, to the uh, TIF area, correct? That's correct. So these nine acres have now they've been annexed and zoned, and now they're part of sub area one. The goal is to expand the CRA and TIF district that currently covers what, the blue area of sub area one. It just, as of right now, just excludes the nine acres that have now been absorbed in the sub area one. Okay. Um, yeah. And this is the date of introduction, so this is just the first reading of it, correct? No. No? It's on as a Oh, I'm sorry, I was reading the date wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the second reading of this. Um, does anyone have questions for Mr. McNally? This is the first reading. That's what I thought. Oh, I thought you said second. No. 
Yeah. They're requesting passage as emergency. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have questions for Mr. McNally? Does the public like to comment on this item? So this is adding the ex the land that we just annexed to the TIF. Uh, okay, perfect. Anyone from council like to speak? Hearing none, we need two motions. Uh, one is to declare emergency, and the second is to uh, no. It's only yeah. It's both ordinances tonight. So the first motion is to declare emergency. The second motion is to move forward with the ordinance. Right. Declare an emergency and waive the second reading. Would vote on that. Okay. What is the will of council? If, if we allowed it into the district to exclude it from the mm -hmm. district design and intent, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So. No. I will. Uh, I will make a motion to pass. No, I to declare ordinance nineteen dash two zero two four an emergency. And second. Wave the second reading. And wave the second reading. Yes. Okay. I'll second. Bob Orsini? Yes. Steve Sealing? Yes. Brian Green? Yes. Tiffany Hollis? Yes. Mayor Barnard? Yes. Jeff Barr? Yes. Okay, now the emergency has been declared. What is the will of council on Ordinance 19 2024? Make a motion to pass Ordinance 19 2024. I'll second. Bob Orsini? Yes. Steve Sealing? Yes. Brian Green? Yes. <clears throat> Tiffany Hollis? Yes. Mayor Barnard? Yes. Jeff Barr. Affirm. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. It's an easy night for you. <laughs> Missing teeth. Okay. We're going to move forward with resolution 2024-30, a resolution imposing a temporary moratorium on medical and adult use cannabis dispensaries in the city of Johnstown. So if you remember three weeks ago when we met, we discussed this, that we'd like to put this a moratorium until December 31st so that we can continue to do more research on this. Um, we are putting it, we're putting the first motion to zoning, start working on it, but the imposing temporary moratorium on it just to keep it there for now until we continue the research. Does anyone have any questions or comments on that? Or did I explain it well enough? Yeah. Do we, I mean, do we have a time frame for the moratorium? Like how long? So until December 31st. December. Yeah. December. Yeah. It says, this is basically, this resolution is the same motion that you all made last time and voted on. Um, our law director said he would prefer to see it in writing, so I, this is a duplicate of what you voted on last, okay. last meeting. We just didn't have the resolution last week. I, to yeah, go. we just didn't have it printed. Okay. Yeah, right. No, I mean, I think, to echo what I said last time, I mean, Obviously, there needs to be some research done on this. Do I think anybody's going to show up with one tomorrow? Not at all. I think we can do some research on this in the meantime. I'm glad that it's going to go through zoning to be able to do some research. Uh, Dave and I will continue on our path over here. Um, got a lot of that already. Um, I don't know that we need a moratorium on this, but I'm glad at least that we have that option and that it's not the end of the discussion. If this does pass tonight, it will pick back up in December. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so I make a motion that we move forward with resolution 2024-30 as written. Oh. I'm sorry, did you open for public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So does anybody else in council have any comments on this item? Would anybody from the public like to speak on this moratorium on the cannabis uh, dispensaries in Johnstown? Hearing none, I make a motion that we move forward with resolution 2024-30. Second. Mayor Barnard. Yes. Jeff Barr. No. Bob Orsini. Yes. Dave Sealand. Yes. Ryan Green. No. Tiffany Hollis. No. Motion fails. Okay. Uh, moving to introduction of legislation. There's none. Other business, we've got some things that we want to get through tonight. Uh, the first is the Greater Johnstown Park and Recreation proposal. So the Greater Johnstown Park and Rec was created three years ago, four years ago? Somewhere around there. And it's a, a joint effort between the school district and the city of Johnstown to create a parks district. Um, recreation district. Recreation district. 
So currently there's a 10 year time cap on this district. Um, that does not allow the parks. Seven of 10 years. Seven of 10 years left. There was a 10 year, there's seven years left. Um, it doesn't allow them to go out and get any kind of financing to help support this organization. So they would like to lift that uh, cap, make it indefinite, or at least a 30 year. Um, the school has given us a proposal on what they would like to see happen before they'll lift, because it takes both of our organizations to lift that. Um, so council has a list of items that the school board would like to see. Um, we'll walk through each of these real quick and see where you guys feel or want to change. Uh, the first is Johnstown Monroe Local School District and City of Johnstown agree to each appoint two members to the Greater Johnstown Park District prior to December 31st, 2023. Uh, we've appointed our two members. Um, they're waiting on appointing one member at this point. Um, anybody have any problems with that one? I know it might just be a point of order, but the <coughs> creation district was formed on or about August 14 or 15. Is it? I don't know why that date's not used. We can send it back to them saying by. I mean, it's no big deal either way, but it's just a matter of. They're going to have an opening as of next week. They you want to have it correspond with an anniversary date as well? Well, I don't know what the law says, oh, one, because okay. it could be based on the establishment of the organization, not the way we do it. Yeah. Right? So it's just a small technicality. That's all. Come yeah. Um, the second item is charter of the Greater Johnstown Park District is modified, clarified that the fifth member is jointly appointed through majority votes of both the Johnstown Monroe Local School District and City of Johnstown. Removal of this appointee is through majority vote of either appointing member. So in discussions with them, Jeff, you can clarify, the Park District would find a person and then it would be up to our two organizations to vote on this, correct? That's what's being proposed. Currently, the practice has been that the fifth member would be voted upon by those four members. Mm -hmm. So two from the city, two from the school district. Applicants would come through the recreation board, <clears throat> which um, would have to live in the Johnstown Monroe School District. So Monroe Township or the city of Johnstown, which John, the city of Johnstown is both, of course. Um, that's how the fifth member originally was appointed, was through the four original members. Was there discussion as to why the deviation from the, the way it's currently done to what they're propo what, what's on the proposal now? Is there any was there any thorough explanation or anything? No. <laughs> um, that's just their current request. I'll speak up first on this is that you know this is a this is a board that does have taxing authority and they're really not voted upon by the constituents as a whole. You have two organizations that appoint four. What's the big deal of then the board itself giving the fifth? You know, then it doesn't feel like that it's heavy with just city and school involvement is one perspective to look from. Um, do you see any reason this should be here? Do I see any reason that it should be here? Yeah. Personally and professionally, no. Okay. You, you, you appointed two people that you thought were upstanding persons from your community that could serve on this board, I certainly would think that you entrust them to select one member to round out your board of five. Okay. What about removal of this appointee? Currently, the removal is based on the four members of the group, correct? Correct. Whereas then the two appointees from the city, we have the ability to, I think there might be some language down on there, they want their ability to remove theirs. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% certain, but I believe that we have the ability now to remove uh, either one of our members, right. should we see fit for should, whatever reason. Should either side have the ability to remove that fifth member if we want, or should that be left with the board to remove that fifth I member? Again, for the same reasons, it should be left up to the board. Are you guys good with that, striking that one? I agree. Uh, please don't just go on what I say, have <laughs> no. your own opinion, <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm not trying to sway. No, I think you've looked at this more than all of us. So. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Greater Johnstown Park District Charters clarified, model, modified to allow each entity, cities and schools, 
to remove their appointed member with a simple majority vote of council or board at any time. Removal is effective immediately following vote. All right, that's what I just said. So currently, there's been some ambiguity if we can remove somebody. This is putting that definite in there. I would clarify it, right? Yep. Okay. Anybody have any problem with that? I mean, it's no, just it's the same as that if we wanted to remove somebody from planning and zoning, mm -hmm. we have the authority to revoke. Yeah, it needs to be clearly defined. Yeah. Especially with everything we have coming up. I know. Uh, Greater Johnstown Park District agrees to m jointly meet with the City of Johnstown and Johnstown Monroe Local School District no later than November 30th every year to set the goals objectives for the following year. These goals objectives are to reflect the needs, desires of the appointing bodies. You want me to continue? I'm yeah, on please do. You're on the roll. This is your baby. I, I, I feel like that this is a two-parter. Um, the first one is a no-brainer. Any good board in there paid executive administrator should be giving some kind of annual update, if not biannually. So I would even um, go on to say that there should be some updates along the way. But as far as one annual um, goals and objectives for the next year uh, would make sense. These goals and objectives start to reflect the needs and desires of the appointing bodies. Um, I'm fundamentally against because it shouldn't, you know, they are their own board. They're there for that reason to set their, they certainly can share, ask for input, vet, et cetera. That would be good community cooperation and communication and all of those things, but. It's their goals. They're, these goals are to reflect so that to me that sounds like that we're giving them the direction of what they mm -hmm. want to do right instead of this is what we're wanting to accomplish because to me that's uh if you read the administrative code chapter 714 and and um the gj prd they're missing a letter um their their mission and vision set forth what they're trying to accomplish. So I don't I don't think the second part of the that bullet point there is okay. So leave maybe it could first. be it could maybe be rewritten in some way to be a little more uh, okay open. Anybody else on that one? Okay, we'll work on something and send it over. Um, any tax tax any levy tax fee proposal of the Greater Johnstown. Parks and Recreation Department shall be transmitted in writing to the Mayor of Johnstown and the School Board President a minimum of 14 days prior to first reading vote of the Parks District. So they have the power to essentially make a recommendation, but they have the, they don't have the power to put it on the ballot. That's not correct. No, they can put it on the ballot. They can put it on the ballot. Just, it's just a notification, hey, we're doing this. Yeah. Okay. So maybe somebody from <laughs> this body would say, hey, maybe you want to consider the timing of it because of ABC, XYZ. Yeah allow some opportunity to, I would say, it should be a minimum of 30 days, maybe even 60. Yeah. I don't think that's unreasonable because they're not going to just say, oh, all of a sudden I want to do this. Yeah. Because then it could be, well, and if you're up against an August 8th deadline or something in 14 days is not enough time to mobilize before that deadline. Yeah. yeah so, so what do you guys want, 30 or 60? I like 60. The more the better. I like 60 as well, yeah. too. Okay. Um, if I may, fee, if you will, JYAA imposes a fee to play sports. I think we should take fee out. You take fee out. Um, they have the ability to levy. They don't have the ability to tax. So I think it just needs to say levy, and they probably put all three of those words in there just to kind of cover things. But I, I definitely think fee should be dropped. Levy is stays. Comes tax. I got a question mark on that's all. Taxes. I think it's the it's restatement of the completion of a levy. Right. But yes, yeah. they, they can't tax independent of passage of levy. Yeah. Okay. Any levy proposal by the Parks Recreation Department shall require two separate readings, a minimum of 30 days between readings vote of the Parks Recreation Department board. So that we would have them. We have, we're giving them 60 days to come to us. Is that would align, right? 
Well, we give them 60 days before they can read it. Then between their two readings, they have 30 days. So it's a total of? 90 days. Uh, yeah, 90 days. Yeah. They're telling us 60 days in advance. They do their reading. first reading 61 days. days later. And then their 90. second reading is 91 days from the... In all reality, they're going to know before that. Absolutely. And how things typically work, they're going to start talking about it. Right. That. And I would just say same thing. Same yeah, I've got it marked out. It's just official it's notice. It's kind of thing. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like every no. Um, any levy proposed by the Parks and Recreation Department shall require at least four approval votes of the Parks and Recreation Department Board to pass. No levy proposal can be passed if the Greater Johnstown Parks and Recreation Department does not have at least four members present. Again, so. I'm fundamentally against it. We only require a majority. Why would we put a more strenuous onus on this board that's recognized by our state government of having, in essence, the, the same power of themselves of home rule. Now, their argument is if the school and the fifth pointee wanted to put a levy on there, but the school or the city didn't want to, the school Like who's, was, who's present would, would... Well, if if me and you were the two people from the city and mm -hmm. these two down here were from... Those three were down from the school and they decided to put it on it, but we, we were... The city was Miss adamantly Lady. against the tax mm -hmm. or levy. We couldn't stop them. And vice versa. <clears throat> yeah, it could be either way. But four, you'd have at least one party of the other majority. I, I think it's an unfair onus on the recreation district to try to get something passed. I can see it either way. So, what is there? Are you guys good with something three? Something that significant was going to cause upheaval. What's that? I said something that significant would cause upheaval. Well, the people I mean, vote. The people are, that's why I said the people vote. Is this a subcommittee? Yeah. This is a board. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the language here says subcommittee all over. <laughs> so you want, so we can change the three then? I say three. Because again, you know, that, that swing member is voted on by the other four anyway, or in the groups. Mm -hmm. So that, and it's not even a swing yeah, person, it's the majority. additional person that's yeah. mutually agreed, agreed, agreed upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, again, I don't know, because mm -hmm. I don't know the chapter and verse, but the Ohio Administrative Code may address this already that you can't supersede it with your own rules to say you've got to have four out of five. Mm -hmm. What's the quorum on a five member board, Teresa? Three? Yeah, three. Yeah. So they'd always have to at least have three. Three votes. Three people. I mean, we three can do members. it in zoning. You can't have a meeting without right two, but we can. And if you have three members present, you still have to have three yes votes to oh, pass no. something. No. Uh, it depends on how. Depends on what you're voting on and how it's written, like, for example, in our charter or whatever. Um, some things are a, like, super majority. Some things are just a um, majority of the quorum. So I've seen the different things written different ways. That may, that may require some additional research yeah. into the chapter okay. that covers these. Broad statement on our charter. Anything that requires a supermajority is going to typically be punitive <laughs> for members of council or removal. I mean, it's, it's going to be your, your heavy decisions. The only thing I'm apprehensive about, if, if it's the majority of members present, that could mean two people could vote yes to put something on out of a five-member group, where if it says three have to vote yes... They have to have three members. Most, most, I would say, I mean, let's say there's... Four there's four of, of us here. It takes, of, it takes three to pass it. Exactly. Same. And shame But if there's the, three people here, you know, it, it takes, takes two. two to pass it. Right. Yeah, but you don't have a quorum well, of three. I mean, you yeah, you have a quorum of three. Quorum of three. Seven, if you have a five-member board... I, no, I, but for I, us. Okay, I'm talking about right. us. Oh, yes. Right. It's four. Yeah. Yeah, right. four. You have a quorum of three. It takes two to pass it. Right. Are you guys okay with just two people passing it? Okay. If the other two members don't show up when they're talking about it, yeah, that's what I was like that, I'm going to be taking a look at who's on there. Right, they're easy yeah. to remove. They're easy to remove. You're removed. You covered that. Yeah. Well, four, right. because you didn't show up to the most, most important, important meeting. Yeah. And you're not doing your homework because right. usually before you vote on something that heavy, there's a multiple conversations. So if I mean, I know life happens, but assuming the worst, yeah, two nefarious actors, the third person just simply doesn't go to the meeting. Right. And then there's no quorum, right. and you reconvene when, you know, the numbers are appropriate. So. Okay. Uh, the City of Johnstown, Johnstown Monroe Local School District, 
Bear Johnson Park Recreation Department, JYAA, need to consolidate land oversight of active recreation under the Greater Johnstown Park Recreation Department, including Belt Park. A point of order. Yes. Need is not a directing word. Must. Shall, typically. Shall. If, we, if we want shall. Is JYA weighed in on this? Because now we're talking about conveyance of properties, pre-agreements sh- pre- be before. The board's not going to decide this. So essentially, right. we're going to put a board in place and tell them, you're, now you're going to do this. Okay, under, your, under your board, you're making these decisions as directed because your charter requires it or, or your, your formation right. requires mm-hmm. it. I don't necessarily like any of that. It's it's mm-hmm. it's inappropriate. Okay. Yeah, in totally. Agreed. Okay. Belt Park is purchased by the Greater Johnstown Parks and Recreation Department or City of Johnstown and then deeded the Greater Johnstown Park Recreation Department if needed to satisfy deed for ten thousand um, dollars. Same it, same issue. Thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And and just a point of order on there, it's actually written in the deed. The first right of refusal to purchase is the city of Johnstown for twenty thousand dollars. So we need to amend that number then. No, we're just deleting the whole item. No. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I don't feel comfortable necessarily putting a dollar amount on any of this. Uh, Greater it's Johnstown just not appropriate. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Greater Johnstown Park Recreation Department agrees to sell the current football soccer field at Belt Park and the Chambers Field baseball softball field at Belt Park to the Johnstown Monroe Local School District for eighty thousand dollars. Same. Same. Okay. The board can decide. Greater Johnstown Park Recreation Department agrees to hire a full-time parks director manager to oversee the development of a master plan and oversight of the youth sports programming. Just change agrees to to shall. Well, hold on. What, what, what youth program? If there's no purchase, there is no program. Yeah, I think it's right. like a board decision also. Yeah, I mean, if, if, it's if they're going to take over management responsibilities, they would need to. Mm-hmm. Or volunteer themselves, I guess. Right, because sometimes you have a working board that's going to do that stuff until they have. Which, now's not the time for this, anyhow. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm sure, in time sure. it will come to. It's just, sure. it's just I not agree with Bob, though. Anything you want done has to say shall. And the, if, it, if you want it to say maybe, right, may. The, the interesting thing about this is this is kind of just a given. Once, once the program starts building, they're going to have to. It could read uh, GJPD agrees to hire a director manager. Shouldn't say part time or full time because mm-hmm. it's likely going to start out part time, then just go to full time um, at an appropriate time in the future. I, I mean, it would be appropriate to hire one, but we don't need to say that they must agree and there shouldn't be a timeline to it. And what they're doing. That's up to the board to give them direction. Come. As far as developing a master plan and oversight of the youth sports program, I'm sure that'd be part of the position description, but it's not appropriate for us to dictate what they should and shouldn't be doing. Uh, Johnstown Monroe Local School District agrees to continue to accommodate youth sports within the Johnstown Monroe Local School District facilities with reduced facilities fees whenever feasible. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's the school I, I saying got, that they'll give use of their facilities. I have a problem with that. <laughs> they reduce rate. This might not be popular that I have a problem with that, but I do. It's all the same kids. I don't understand. Someone educated So the me school's on this. not charging JYAA premium dollar to rent the basketball gym for them. Why are we charging them anything? The school is not charging JYAA premium dollar. Why are they charging them anything? They do have to cover some expense, paper towels, soap, water. But JYA also charges the school for use of their fields also. So that's kind of a reciprocal agreement. For the same kids. Everybody's kids (laughs) are using the same stuff. I see your point. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not in that board. (laughs) It's not not significant amount of money, Tiffany. It's a couple thousand dollars. Basketball and volleyball is the biggest thing. JYAA, I believe, benefits more from renting the barn to the wrestling program. And we have JYAA basketball is in a significant use, and volleyball is a significant use to the school, the elementary school I'm referring to, compared to their significant use of our facility, of JYAA <clears throat> facilities and the impact it has. 
Do they have their rates for usage? Yes, they, have, they, do, they do have public They have rates. rates. You'll yes. know exactly. That was my question. There's, there's, the police three, is the rate. there's multiple tiers. There's a way to okay. apply for free use. There's there's a whole list of categories. It's it's very uh, detailed on what you can and can't do. Yeah. And some of those details probably go into why there is some charge. Yeah. The we can ask about this. The school is <laughs> the school is generous in saying, yeah, you can use the elementary school basketball court because if if they did not have that, there would not be a youth basketball program. Period. Yeah, because there is no other place to play, indoors or outdoors, for that matter. So we'll inquire about what is the financial cost is for each side on this. So that Ms. Hollis, you had something with the school liaison committee. We can kind of try to yeah. okay. facilitate a conversation with that, maybe. Okay. Mr. Mayor, yes. if I could offer just a different perspective as to why they are charging a fee. Everyone oftentimes thinks of JYA as the only youth athletic association. There are other athletic associations that exist in town, and I think for consistency, if they charge one organization X, they would charge the other organization. But if they didn't charge anything at all, then any organization that formed itself into a nonprofit would then be able to utilize those facilities. So I think they're trying to set a uh, legitimacy with the organization, which JYA obviously has hit that measure. But I think they're really trying to balance the usage of the facility with one organization versus another. And by having that fee associated with it is, is one way. I want to protect the school district a little bit from why this is probably necessary, and it's because of that wide variety. We get the same request from a city whenever somebody wants to advertise or do something in the park yard. If we allow it for one, we have to allow it for all. So that's probably the rationality behind why they have a fee associated with it. Because if they didn't, they would then have to let any organization be able to use that facility for, for the same reason. I'll, I'll second or you know offer another information. When I ran the youth wrestling program before I joined JYA, it was an independent nonprofit club team if you will so it was just an organization of of a group of kids we had to get our insurance and do all those other things the school was accommodating and fair and it wasn't it wasn't a money maker opportunity i just don't want it to come off as, as that's the situation it wasn't an opportunity for the school to extract money from the community it was pretty much what sean said if they classify a group and say that you don't have to pay, that means everyone that qualifies for that group doesn't have to pay, and that could that could be a huge amount. And then who has access, who who has more access, who does it, how do you prioritize, how do you stack rank? The school has always been very fair with my, uh, say, five to seven year issue interaction to that specific uh, detail. I think when you just see it, I think, like for Tiffany and I, you first see it, you're kind of concerned, like you're charging but well, I guess when sense. I'm looking at like consolidating and joining forces, it's like, wait a minute, mm. why are we charging? But it makes money? sense yeah. that you I have to legitimize. That, I think them. the goal and the intent is is pure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just how we walk up to it and get there is, mm -hmm. is something we just got to work through. I'll tell you this: the school district is so generous that the past couple of years, JYAA has given them fifteen hundred dollars to refinish the gymnasium floor at the elementary school because the amount of use that they put on that floor so it's a good playing condition for those two sports in the fall and winter so that hopefully I'm trying to convey what a good indication of a deal that JYAA gets out of it that they've decided to give back some of the registration fees so that they have a nice facility to play at each year because they've gone to other gyms where it's like a ice skating rink when, when players try to stop, pivot, uh, jump, et cetera, for, for the two sports programs. Okay. Um, and the last one, Johnstown Monroe School District and the City of Johnstown agree to approve a 30-year agreement for the Parks and Recreation Department. Jeff, since you're an expert in this area, is 30 years enough? I, I would like to see it to go to, you know, I mean, what's the difference between 30 and 50? It's a whole different why, board. Why is there a limit? Like, is there? I, 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 that's a good question. But if there, if if some compromise, because we would need to vote on it and mirror the same thing too. But thirty, I feel is a little too short because if they were successful in a levy, um, you know, you think about your mortgage, it's thirty-year mortgage. Mm -hmm. So, so now they're financing 
which typically is no more than 30, 20, 25 year bonds, but is it 30 years total from its inception three years ago? Now you only got 27 years to bond money. It may take a couple of years to get it. So now you go from 27 to maybe 24, 23 years. Um, I don't see the difference between 30 and 50, so why not give them the 50? Or for with- that matter, it'd be in perpetuity. But hopefully in, in 30 years, um, I could still be here. Um, some will still be here, but you know, hopefully the program is up and running and, and people see its value that they will renew that well prior to its end of life. Are you guys good with putting 50 for now? Good with 50. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I will type this up and... Um, One more question for you. Yeah. There's going to be have to a funding component for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to get off the ground if it doesn't have at least some type of operating budget. Right. If two, if a board and a council are overseeing it, that funding commitment should be equal. There's an issue with that. The school district cannot give money. They can give resources. They can give other things, but they cannot give money. And that was part of the the tax proposal when I said $150,000 a park. Could we start funding this organization $50,000 a year so much to help them get established and get on their, their feet? I would like to have another school board liaison committee meeting to okay. investigate these details a little deeper before we put something together for passage. Okay. So I'll get this typed up, let Jeff review it, then I'll give it to the school board liaison committee to present to. Is that good? Yep. Perfect. On the same note, when we talk about the school board, um, I'll, in a second, please, Mr. Liggett, is that I had asked uh, Monica, board JYA board president, and she said, well, what's the school district um, percentage of Monroe Township and Johnstown City proper kids in the reg- kids in the program percentage wise that we we should pursue with our um, fellow uh, trustee memberships of Monroe Township to to also ask them to seed some money proportionately based on registration numbers from JYAA so. If we're given $100 and 30% of the kids are Monroe Township, 70%, you know, they should give $30 and we give $70. Yeah, I like that idea. Well, not that it needs to be written in here. I just this should, this should all be formational stuff. Yeah. Once the board forms, once they get organized, they'll pass their own level. They'll almost operate as their own entity yeah. with a little bit of oversight from the other community boards and councils so that we all work together. That's I believe that's the intent and desire of the I, I I would like to uh, not not correct you, Mr. Orsini, but please do. They we do not oversight them. Mm-hmm. We can talk, we can recommend, we can all you know both us and the school board can have those conversations and appropriate committees and things of that nature. But in the end, they are their own independent board, and our job is to select the best two people that we believe will have the best interest of the city of Johnstown residents for recreation and park amenities. That, if you will, like it, when, when you say um, oversight, that's the extent of our oversight. I, I agree 100% once they propose once the pass a pass a levy. Because as long as the funding and the facilities are coming from council and school board, there's a, there's a, I guess there's an appropriations, if you will, yeah. oversight component to that. So. Yes, I agree. That's I would right. like to see them stand alone and run on their own. Yes, <clears throat> just, just a little sidebar to this. And part of that conversation, you talked about the selling of possible selling of Belt Park. The council needs to remember that the city well field is in there, and there are many restrictions on what you can do on that yeah. land because the well field is in there. So, if there is going to be any transfer of ownership, we need to make sure, from the city's perspective, that. Everyone understands there are restrictions in there on what types of buildings, what what things can happen within that area. And the entire belt park, due to the 300 foot radius, safety radius around each well, contains that entire park. That's a great point, uh, Mr. Liggett. Uh, I believe all parties are aware of uh, that specific situation. It's, it's come up in conversation before. Okay, possible purchaser, I just want to make sure mm-hmm. yeah. that there are limitations. I, I am. I am confident that the school board 
is aware of what can and can't be done with that property if it ever was conveyed. Okay. Okay. So we'll get these typed up. We'll get it over to school liaison committee. Mr. Barr, you're going to continue following up with the the parks, the school, everybody having another meeting like we did to talk some more. I believe that the last meeting, I think our city manager was going to take a look I'm, as far as coordinating that because they said August was a good time frame. With oh, that whole group we had before the. That wasn't the liaison committee. No, it was That's correct. It was a school. It was a school representative. It was city representative. It was JYA representative. It was Greater Johnstown Park representative, about trying to get us all on the same page. Yes, having that meeting set up. Yes, and then I also put out there the ability or the thought to have that master park planning initiative kind of looked at or or proposal given. I believe Dr. Wagner was receptive to that idea. So I can I can get that on the books if everyone is a, is willing to okay. do that. I'll have Teresa send out some possible dates, get a meeting lined up so we can have some further discussion to see maybe next steps forward. Okay, perfect. Do that, Teresa. Okay. Uh, next item: creation of a township liaison committee discussion. So we have lots of committees. One of them we don't have is a township um, liaison committee. Um, there's been discussion. Uh, Tiffany, I've talked about this quite a bit that we'd like to create a, a township liaison committee that that group is responsible for meeting with the four townships of St. Albans, Liberty, Monroe, and Jersey, a monthly basis, quarterly basis, just to touch base, keep communication lines open with these different organizations so that there's, we're all part of this big overall area that's Johnstown, but there's townships all interweaved in here. So to be able to work together with all these townships is very important. So. What is the thought of council on creating this uh, committee? In favor of it. Have we talked to the townships at all yet about their openness? They don't have to create a committee, but <laughs> I mean, we, we talk we with every township, so it would just be the group talking with the township instead of just one person. Teresa, what do we have to do to create a committee? Okay, so there's no extra things we have to do. I would put it in a Pass resolution. Pass a resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that way you can list who you're pointing to it and all that, but. Okay, so council is willing, or you guys are wanting to create this committee so we can start making sure we have open communication with all our surrounding districts. Is this a standing committee or does this have a specific end date? Like an ad hoc Standing committee. committee. Or, okay. And it needs to go on just like finance and school board liaison. We have a school board. We need to have that liaison with our townships. You could mirror it after the, the school district school liaison. Yeah. I think okay. That would be your most accurate reflection of what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Could you create something like that, Teresa, and have it for the next council meeting? Yes. Okay. Would you put three members on it like your other yes. committees? Three members. Mm -hmm. Three yeah. members of council? Yeah. Okay, and then you guys can decide that next time. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what the guys think about that? Um, the last item I have, or one of the last items, is the NCA board appointment discussion. So. We need to appoint four members to the NCA board. Um, these individuals need to be very savvy, very uh, just really incredible individuals. What do you guys say? Um, so some names that Tiffany and I have come up with to throw out, um, and we want more feedback from you guys. We need to figure out the process of how we're going to do this. Is Mr. John Kessler? Um, Denise Blankenmeyer, um, Doug Shaw. What are some other names of individuals in the community that you guys think would be great additions to this committee? Jesse Koppel. Anyone else? We need four, right? Do what? Four, right? Yeah. I just want to make Do they sure have to be residents? Do they have to be? No, no, they, no, no, they don't have right? to be. It can be anybody in this greater district, correct? Do they have to be? So, um, um, Bree Williams with Williams and Williams and Associates. Oh, Charlie Williams Grandaugh. Charlie Williams Grandaugh, yeah. Um, I can't 
can't think of John's last name up there at the coffee house that does taxes. John Hicks. John oh, Hicks, John yeah. Hicks. He'd be good. He resides in Gahanna. I'm not sure if you're trying to find localized residents or not. Yeah, is there a residence? He's certainly vetted in this community. He's a property owner, right? But he does I, own property. Not saying or against. I'm just you're right. I understand. There, I don't know if there's. A, that's why I ask. If I there agree was with a, you. He'd be a good candidate. If there's is a there, restriction, is there is there anything wrong with someone that lives like say Gahanna from Johnstown? So we've got six names. Do we want to do interviews? Do we want to reach out to these individuals, see if they're even interested? How? What is the proper steps on this? Because this is a first for the city. I still got some names. No. Yeah, oh. I was going to say. I think there's other names. Okay. I mean, this is not one that I. Mr. Mayor, I'd we've, we've got to move. Discuss. We've got till when, Jamie, to get these created? Um, I mean, it, it, not necessarily a hard deadline, but we would really like to get the NCA in place based on some of these. <laughs> reading on August 20th and then that board would then establish a meeting to establish bylaws and their CCRs and just the operational procedures um, but from our standpoint we've, we've, we kind of have our three names I would be one of them as well and the appointments are two years or one year terms so yeah but yeah okay Mr. Mayor yes sorry Jamie for you then no it's it right. you you are able to with pretty good certainty to have this discussion in executive session I say that for the protection of creating hurt feelings from people that have been mentioned tonight that may not get selected um, but that gives you some ability to have some free flow of discussion uh, while you're trying to, to find <coughs> the four candidates out of a great pool of candidates I would hate for anyone to, to have ill feelings towards the process um, so I just wanted to point that out if that's something you would, would you guys be interested or willing to go into we have to call emergency executive session to discuss these names tonight would anybody ever any apprehensive to do that instead of speaking about them in public and possibly mentioning someone then leaving them off and I don't mind speaking about it in public I mean I don't know how you guys feel about advertising the position yeah are those names guaranteed to even want a position well, that's the thing is do so we, do we, we advertise for a week, two weeks? I, wouldn't, I, I don't think this is something we want to advertise to some, for. These, to some of these people. Well, I don't know that it hurts to reach out to <coughs> some of these people. No, reach out to them. Yes. Right. And while you're doing that, advertise because there may be people with amazing resumes who show up. Jamie, what that qualifications you would you be like looking for if you were? So I, I also I'll let Craig speak to because he was kind of the godfather of uh, establishing the new community authorities in Ohio. But the, the, part of the concept is it's a it's a way for communities to engage with um, experts in different fields that may not be willing or able to make the commitment to be on council planning zoning or some of the other communities that you guys are. You know, it's just time. It's very time. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a burden. Uh, I mean, you guys, I'm not preaching the choir, but um, it's it's a way to kind of diversify the city's expertise too, and lean on some other folks. So, uh, members of council, Greg Stipe with uh, Barnes and Thornburg. The um, it's a just step back for a moment. Remind mm -hmm. you all, it's a seven-member board of trustees. Its responsibility is to implement the charter of the new community authority, which is the petition that you previously approved for the creation of the authority, the infrastructure that it's going to pursue, the joint agreements it's going to pursue, the funding methods, including its community development charge. Four of the members are appointed by city council. Three of the members are appointed by the developer. <coughs> the members ultimately settled into 
cycling two-year overlapping terms, but to get to that, some of the initial members are going to have one-year terms, and then they'll come back around for reappointment or substitute appointment. Um, it's helpful if people have some knowledge of government and contracting. It is helpful if there are some people who have some knowledge of finance. Um, and it may be helpful if we try to come up with a little write-up about what the expectations would be. I would expect, for example, that there might be three or four meetings of the authority board yet this year. There'll be an initial organizational meeting and there'll be some subjects that'll come before the board. The initial organizational meeting is to just get all of their operating procedures in place. Um, and and so uh, that's, that's the best picture I can give you. You need people who are civic minded, but also people who also understand that the charter of the community authority has already been established by council in the petition. And it's a focus on supporting the development and the new community authority. Does that help? Yeah. Since, since you're the godfather of this area, with most communities, how did they go about, do they, they put it, uh, an ad out asking for people to volunteer and then interview them? How is it normally they, done? I'm not aware of any community that put an ad out. I think that uh, they went through a process much like I saw council begin to go through this evening. Um, and I think the reason for that is if you put a general ad out about this, um, I wonder if you'll be able to effectively communicate what the job is as opposed to reaching out to people and having individual conversations. My concern with a general ad would be, and, and I don't know Johnstown, but you could end up with a lot of people who just see it as an opportunity to be a civic service but don't understand and you may put yourself in a position of needing to say no more frequently than you'll have the opportunity to say yes just because you might get people who are not necessarily the right choices for this board okay what is council what would council like to do with this I'd like how would you to think? discuss in executive session the whole thing yeah. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. A um, couple other things on other business. Um, Frank Sia and his group um, are starting to ramp up. Um, you will see more activity from them on social media. Um, they are preparing a newsletter. They're hoping to get that out, I believe, the 1st of September with the September billing. Um, so hopefully you'll start seeing a newsletter come out. Um, if you have interest in what goes on in this, um, get with me. We can set up a meeting with Frank. Um, uh, we, Frank and I are going to try to meet every couple of weeks um, and go over what he's doing with this so that he, he stays in, informed of what's going on with the city. And then we talked about doing... Should he be Mayor, part of a... You said that you and Frank were going to meet. I'd, I'd like to suggest that somebody else with council... Yes, totally. Right, so that... Yep. I'm not saying it's me, I'm not volunteering, but... Nope, the more the merrier. Maybe somebody else that's more appropriate in is there a committee we can? Is there a committee we can make him part of? Like a, like a committee that just oversees that? Because that's three council members. So... Yeah, but then you, then you have regular scheduled meetings and maybe there's got to be some flexibility. He's got other things going on. Dave goes back to school. He's only got so much research time. Winter comes up, my schedule opens up a lot. So, right. so sounds like, it sounds I like will, you want to be the second person I will on be. that group. <laughs> I, I will contact with Frank <coughs> and find out what days um, and get a regular cadence because he mentioned getting a cadence and find out when then at, let council know what days he's looking at that he wants to regular meet and whoever wants to meet with him those days can sit down with him. So, I'd be happy to be part of that too. I mean, because even when school does ramp up 3 30, everyone's out of the building anyway. So, 3 30s. 
a decent green light for me too. Okay. Okay. I will get that out to the council what his what cadence he wants to do with this. And then the last item is walking audits. We've talked about this a couple times. I'd like to get something on the schedule and let's go for a walk. Oh I I know Tiffany's interested. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Would a Saturday or Sunday afternoon work better for everybody? No way in the afternoon. During the week. Hot, brother. During the week, During evening? The week. Late afternoon. Put some dates out there. Late okay. afternoon with a hard, you know. After you said do a survey, it's time. most available. Uh, okay. If we're going for a walk and there's four of us, does that count as a meeting? <laughs> Jeff can drive and we'll sit in the back of his truck and be done in 10 minutes. Tracy, does that constitute as a meeting if four of us are walking around town? If you're discussing city business, it does. <coughs> if, we're just, if we say this road really sucks, we need we to fix this. It, you just can't vote on it. You can't. I, no, you, if you are having a prearranged meeting to discuss city business, it's a meeting. So if we're talking about how crappy the sidewalk is on South Main Street in front of 181, say, that's wow, city business? Look at that tree. It's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, something good. Okay, we'll figure out something how we can do this and not be against the law and get in trouble. Can you be a part and talk loud <laughs> with the with the monthly five hundred? With the monthly council, whoever shows up shows up. Yeah. <coughs> how far apart do we have to be? So can three like exactly. walk like? <laughs> Fifteen. Yeah, because we're all within a, we're all within a three square mile city every day. I can't hear shit. Yeah. But you're not having Just a prearranged meeting. Single you can file. You bump into each other in the coffee shop and mm -hmm. chat it up. That's why. Now three of us can go at a time, right? Yes. Okay. We just walk single file. say Friday okay. nights. There's a good chance that we're all at one restaurant. About it. Yeah. Okay. A happenstance meeting is totally fine. Totally well. Okay. But you can't discuss. But you can't have a city business. Prearranged meeting of a quorum of council members to okay. discuss city business. Okay. We'll figure it out. We'll just actually yeah. walk Okay. Um, that's all I had for other business. Sorry it was so much tonight. I just wanted to get a lot of stuff knocked out. Um, Ms. Hollis, do you have anything for other business? Uh, I don't think so, do they? Okay. One thing I have, the historic design overlay. Where are we at in progress with that? they get our proposal back to us yet, Sean? Did MKSK get their proposal back yet? For the design guidelines? Yes. Not yet. Okay. Can you be expecting it any time? Uh, we have a tentative date on that. When they're going to get us a proposal? Yeah. I'll, I'll get an email out to them and find out. Okay. So we definitely have things happening in the downtown area. Um, we have new businesses coming in. We have other requests happening. Um, I want to have a plan of action in place and at least being worked on while we have these things coming. Um, we just talked about marijuana tonight. Um, so we have things coming we have demolitions that have had several of them we've heard recently um, we have these things coming and I want to make sure that we don't lose track of all these new things coming before we have a track in place for what we'd like to see so I think it's important to get this done we're talking about moratoriums for new business but not moratoriums for changing things um, so I think we need to get that's something we need to get done okay. so we should have something back from them by our next council meeting then I'm emailing them right now. Okay. okay. What are the demolitions that are? Is that we've had? Well, we've had now? we've had four come in. I'm just talking about ones we've had. It's becoming a new. It's becoming popular. So I'm not talking about any new ones we have coming in, but I'm saying we've had some here recently. So we've also had new businesses come in. We've had options at new types of businesses coming in. Um, there's a lot coming to Johnson. <coughs> so I want to have framework in place of what we're looking for things to look like and, and a plan for the area, especially our downtown area and anything historical down there. I'd hate to see something get changed if, if things come at us quickly. Okay. I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. And I'm not sure if we want to discuss it here at an executive session or what the protocol is, but the zoning for um, flying iron, the ax throwing, <laughs> um, just curious what we're going to do about that. Is anybody else aware of that issue? Dave, you've... We did get an email about that. Who got an email? So there was an email that came in. I, I think don't know email. if it went to staff or who all it went to, okay. but... What email? So there was an email that came in asking about it. I think it's to staff by now. From who? So about... Well, they wanted to make it, it the dog groomer 
um, that was located at, I don't really know the address the Pet behind, yes. yeah, Pet Authority, um, wants to move into the Flying Iron building, but mm -hmm. they were told it was zoned residential. It is zoned residential. Which, that's fine, but it was a business before, so whatever we need to do to fix that, we need to do that. The zoning needs to be redone, make it all the same zoning. I just want to see us turning away a business that's been here that is supported um, no, and, heavily by the community. It's a, it's a product of spot zoning. That's what it sounds like, right? I don't know. That's I what I'm asking. Like, I just didn't know we need to fix it. The email it. I saw, I thought it was like from a title agent or something checking on what who, was who going sent, on. Who sent this email? I don't know. You'd have to read it. It's a public document. Well, we don't have we don't have it. So we have it. I think our staff asking. has it at this point. Teresa, is there an email? I believe I saw Ben. I, it, I, I'm looking at my email. It might have just went to the zoning members. And I think it was an email that went out to all the planning and zoning members. But yeah. I do think that Ben and Kristen Hurst forwarded it. I was just kind of waiting for Sean to get back and take a look. I can give you the background that I do have. Yes, please. Um, so there was an inquiry, inquiry made at the Flying Iron location for a, a potential business to move in there. Um, as the mayor stated, I think it's some members of the Pet Authority. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not specifically the pet authority, but from some staff that yes. operate there. They're wanting to start a new business um, out of the Flying Iron location because of that one closing down. So that was kicked over to Trevor at MKSK. Uh, introduction was made with the property owner and Trevor to kind of go through the process. So Trevor, from the email that I received, had some communication with the property owner. The back side of that is zone residential. So if I had to guess or assume, which is always a dangerous situation, I would imagine that the Coughlin dealership existed prior to the zoning uh, of that particular area. So it was thereby grandfathered in. But once the <coughs> Coughlin business shut down, a variety of other businesses went in. Um, don't want to diminish any staff previous, but probably some due diligence was not done uh, in order to check a box. Uh, as it stands right now, Flying Iron is, is, a, is a use. Pet Authority would be a different permitted use if it was a GCC1. However, it's not a permitted use in residential. So there's two options that I could see uh, moving forward. I would want to lean heavily on Trevor communicate this to the applicant as he is the city's planner uh, but I believe the email that I've gotten back from him I feel confident in sharing this there's two options the applicant can make a request for a zoning change on that specific parcel uh, or the city can initiate a zoning map amendment uh, with that specific parcel two options are available the one I usually would not recommend where the city would just take it upon itself because if you don't confirm with the property owner, you're taking away entitlements and putting different entitlements on there. If there's a confirmation from the property owner that stated this is a desire, the process can be a little bit more expedited if it's initiated from the city, from what I believe. Again, I would want to check with Trevor just to confirm the process, make sure it, it can go this way. But those are the two options. Um, like I said, typically, you'd want the applicant because you don't want to change zoning on someone without their first request. But if this is something that is a housekeeping item that can be alleviated uh, in order to move things along, I would agree with Tiffany. I think this may be a good opportunity for that action to be initiated by this council. So I can look into it a little bit further. Just got back today. So unpacking some of those emails, haven't had a chance to check with Trevor, um, but we can certainly move in, in whatever direction council would like to. Um, it would be nice to have one zoning for that area instead of two or three different. Zones. I look forward to zoning committee's recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, I, it's going to have to go. I think either process has to go through the formal zoning approval yeah. recommendation to this board and then this board then makes a decision. So uh, like I said, this, this all kind of rapid fired. I believe the first email was sent last week. So throw government under the bus government does not move quickly um, and that's this is just a product of it but uh, we'll do the best we can and uh, Trevor will get engaged with this and uh, see what path we can move forward 
and Thad will probably also have to be engaged a little bit from an attorney to just to make sure that we're following our, our, our P's and Q's, dotting our I's, crossing our T's. Last thing I want to do is, is allow something that's not permissible and then you've opened up um, a situation where someone then also has the ability and afforded the rights to do the same because a precedent was set. So I don't think there's anything against the, the concept of this obviously continuing to do what it has been, but we just want to make sure that legally we're not setting ourselves up to be painted into a box. So okay. If that's okay. Does that help, Tiffany? Yeah, I just want to make sure we're, you know, trying to do this in a timely for manner sure. for them because they're trying to get, you know, sure. they've got decisions to make and the community has supported them sure. heavily, so I want to make sure we're doing so. what the community <coughs> wants us to do. Absolutely. Tell them to get the application and let's get it going. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on yours? Mm -mm, nope. I just remembered that. So. Okay. Anybody from down there with anything? For what? For other business? Um, go ahead. No, you, had your finger up. you had your finger up. So wanted to just give you a quick update, and I'll be careful, but I do want to update you all. We did get a letter from Bright Speed's attorney challenging our re refusal to allow for installation of fiber within the right-of-way. Uh, really quickly, uh, as a summary to that, Bright Speed bought out, gosh, Century Link, Embark, whatever you want to call it before then. Um, they are entering the fiber optics line of, of communication, and so they're wanting to run fiber throughout the city. They had applied for right-of-way permits. Uh, at the time, we have a contract with Horizon. Well, Is that, okay, that that's one. who it was, Horizon's who? Horizon, was previous Horizon. Okay. correct. They were the previous provider that came in, gave a proposal to the, the previous council, uh, and were awarded or given the right to install fiber optics throughout the community. Uh, immediately, my sensitivity to right-of-way work obviously goes to anything aerial. Um, so. I pushed back and said, if there's going to be installation of anything, it needs to be underground, which I will continue to do. Uh, the other piece of this is we're probably going to have multiple providers wanting to come in to do fiber. It's a new technology. It's a new service. Um, anytime you start to have a variety of utility services underground, it starts to begin to look a little bit like spaghetti. The next time you have to plan a pole, put a water line in, Jack Sky has got to operate around 15 different, you know, utilities that are also under there so having some restriction on that was also my concern so like i said got a letter from their attorney uh i've kicked that over to our legal staff they're reviewing it um, i can give you a better update whenever we get more information i did peruse through uh, the first initial email back from our attorneys but i would like to have that conversation in an executive session but wanted to make you aware that we did get that back and let me know if i'm on the wrong track as far as my assessment from what I've heard conversations from you all as to limiting the amount of aerial utilities as well as the installation of new underground utilities without some say so from from our team so if that's inaccurate I can follow up with them and let them know that they can proceed if you would like to gain further information to see what our legal rights are we may not have any um, I can then schedule that executive session with you all to discuss with our attorney present. What are you guys' thoughts on going underground versus above ground? I know downtown we're trying to limit the above ground. I think everything needs to be underground. I agree. So we've, we've said that zoning several times too. Everything new needs to be underground. If there's potential information available from our legal team, I'm not interested in doing anything until that comes in. I like it. Okay, I'll schedule it for the next meeting to have our attorney present to give us information that we can react to. Um, we may not have many rights. I know with utility companies, it's, it's somewhat limited. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get you a, a scheduled executive session for that. Secondly, uh, Middle Ohio Regional Planning Commission, we had talked about transitioning over to them as our federal monetary provisional planning agency. Uh, as it relates to transportation. So before doing that, I wanted to cross one last T and checking with a current project that we have in the works with LCATS. Uh, that is the Leafy Dale traffic signal. I have gotten some communication back from ODOT and LCATS signaling that 
they would cover the right-of-way costs, but not the construction cost. Uh, there was a pretty significant grant uh, that the city was was awarded. Um, right now, what I'm looking at is around a $953,000 construction cost that LCATS is providing. Um, I want to dig into that a little bit further. That may be at stake. They indicated that LCATS, if we switch to Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission, would did not follow through necessarily with that contribution. However, those are federal funds that they are given for these projects. So the next question I have over to Morpsey is to see if they then would facilitate and fund that project. Uh, if not, then obviously I would recommend council reconsider and then give you some timelines on when we can transition. Do we have to wait 10 more years? So a little bit of a fact-finding investigation right now. But before we pull the trigger and before you get legislation in front of you, I wanted to get that done. I do have the legislation from Morsi to do so, but I was waiting, waiting on that finalized document. Um, and now that I have it, you'll probably be delayed in re reviewing the shift to Mid-Ohio Regional until we can get this sorted out. Appreciate the detail. Okay. And then finally, not a reaction tonight, just an information. Um, as we're working through JAG, we had the initial meeting uh, a couple weeks ago uh, at the Ohio EPA. All of you attended, so appreciate that. Um, there's been discussion about uh, a lobbyist, so that's something that you'll see as a proposal down the pipeline. If you choose to do a lobbyist, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine as well. Just want to give you the option and the ability to look at a proposal. Uh, I believe Granville and Alexandria, I know Granville and Alexandria are looking at the same proposal. Um, so it was recommended to us by our attorney to potentially look at that option. Um, a lot of organizations utilize those to achieve some back channel ways of negotiating or at least telling your story to different levels of the state. So not something you have to react to tonight, but just consider. Um, that'll be a proposal I'll probably email out to all of you. If you do get it, don't respond. Um, <laughs> it's more for information uh, for you to process so that we can talk about it at the next council meeting. Again, that would violate those sunshine laws, and we want to make sure we're not doing any of that. So that's all I've got, Mayor. Okay. Um, two more things for me. Um, the Hartford Fair is going on this week. Um, Ms. Hollis and I will be attending a um, breakfast there on the 8th that we were invited to. Um, also, um, the Chamber of Commerce has invited all of council and all of the citizens of Johnstown to attend um, Lynn's Fruit Farm on the 13th. I think it's from 10 to noon, is it, Ms. Hosser? Um, to witness the last superload that will be traveling into the area. Um, they're making a huge party of it, aren't they? Yeah, yep. Do you have any more details on it? Oh, yes, I do. Hang on one second. Um, there will be... Uh, Dave's got some information there, too. Go for it. Oh, I, I pulled it up for you already. No, go ahead. I'm being passed back and forth. <laughs> no, really, go, go, go ahead. No, go. Go, go ahead. Here you go. Because you, you, you can add color. I know you. Oh, I was going to bring this up, but I, knew you, I know you can add the color. Let's do it. Obviously, it's for Intel. So Emily always does a great job, and the chamber is partnering with Emily. We're going to have a lot of um, like kid activities, apple picking. Um, I believe we're trying to do the apple launcher um, for for the kids, so that should be fun. Um, I'm trying to read through this. This is the last day before the last day before school starts. So if you have kids, anybody watching, take your kids, let them enjoy their last day of freedom. Yeah. Well, if they're doing the apple guns. That's fun for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not, don't quote me on that one yet. I know we're trying. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't if you got to pay when you get there, go ahead. It's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think there there'll be a ten dollar market voucher that mm -hmm. you get there yep. also, and then um, complimentary apple picking vouchers. So should be really fun time, oh, and also they get to see how huge the air handlers are. Awesome. And then last, um, the New Albany Walking Classic is coming up. Um, the chamber has invited any groups that want to join them to walk uh, with them. So if anyone on council would like to do something, we can do it as a group with the chamber. Um, there's the five mile and 10 mile routes. So just putting that out there that we've been invited for that from the chamber. So a lot of good things that the chamber's putting on. Um, anybody on this side with anything for other business? Just one follow up. Is, is there an appetite to add an emergency executive session to discuss the NCA board appointees tonight? tonight? Mm -hmm. 
It should go quick. If if there is, we have to waive our rules mm-hmm. of counsel, which is just a you know that, that exists to prevent someone from popping an executive session uh, in. But if if everyone's agreement and discussed beforehand, I think that meets that intent. So if there is that, uh, we can waive it and add it. Okay. Jeff, you said you were good, right? I'm good. The Johnstown, uh, the JYA Coach Pitch All-Stars won the first annual Johnstown Classic uh, Tournament. So very happy about that. Can't have the second annual without the first. So it was a good five-team uh, pool play, and uh, like I said, Johnstown came away with the victory at the end. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So that concludes all that. I make a motion that we move to executive session to consider the employment of a public employee. That will include all members of council. Uh, that would be it. And also a motion to waive our rules. Uh, go ahead. You want to do one at a time? One motion at a time. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion we move to executive session <laughs> to consider. Wait, wait. Do the other one first. Let's do the waive the second. Yes. Or waive, yes. the, um, waive your rules. Let's do that. And then you can. the motion can include both, both. executive okay. sessions. At the same time. I make a motion that we waive our rules for the um, 24 hour rule for executive session. Second. Mayor Barnard. Yes. Jeff Barr. Affirm. Bob Rossini. Yes. Dave Seeland. Yes. Ryan Green. Yes. Tiffany Hollis. Yes. Okay, now I make a motion that we move to executive session to consider the employment of a public employee and also move to executive session to consider the applicants. Is that the re- No, what it is would be to consider the appointment of a public official. To consider the appointment, the appointment of a public official. Don, you got to name who's in there, bud. Huh? You got to name who's in there. If it's not the same people. And you- it would be the seven council members. Six. I don't think Sean. Six. 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 Whatever. Six council members. Did you make both? Yeah, both maybe. sessions. Do what? For both sessions. Yes. yes. Just members of council. Yeah. Okay. I'll second. Mayor Barnard. Yes. Jeff Barr. Affirm. Bob Orsini. Yes. Dave Seeland. Yes. Ryan Green. Yes. Tiffany Hollis. Yes. Mr. Mayor, any business to follow? And no business to follow tonight, so.